The universe likes to sometimes make coincidences that almost seem unbelievable when looking in retrospect. And this concept is mainly what the video is centered around. Before I talk about the two songs that are weirdly connected to 9-11, I'd like to first share some fun coincidences to get us in the right mood. Maybe it's the right mood, I don't know. Did you know that the second and third presidents of the USA died hours apart from one another on the 4th of July? And did you also know that one woman named Violet Jessup survived the Titanic, Olympic, and Britannic shipwrecks? I would never go near the ocean or boats if I were her, but I appreciate her bravery. Listen to this track! track. Anyway, I'll start off the first song that's somehow loosely, weirdly connected to September 11th, 2001. And if you somehow don't know what happened on this date, it's essentially when four planes were hijacked by a bunch of terrorists, one crashed into a field because the terrorists were stopped by the passengers, one plane crashed into the Pentagon, and most infamously of all, two planes managed to crash into Towers 1 and 2 of the iconic World Trade Center. As you'd expect, many people would lose their lives, and the world was in a very rough place for quite a while after this, so no disrespect to the events or people that were involved in 9-11. I just find this stuff interesting, so let's go. Hey, I'm starting to feel okay. The Moldy Peaches is a pretty popular indie group consisting of Adam Green and Kimya Dawson. While the band had been together since the mid-1990s, they grew to popularity for their 2001 album, The Moldy Peaches. The album has a pretty low production quality, which made it even more liked in the anti-folk and indie music scene. Aside from this, the album was released on none other than September 11th, 2001. What makes this album appear on this video is the 18th track, New York City's Like a Graveyard. New York City's like a graveyard. The song isn't too on the nose when compared to the events of 9-11, considering that the song is about the moldy peaches, uh, haters, and disliking of the New York City lifestyle and environment, but there are some lyrics that haven't aged uh, too well. All the tombstones, skyscraping. All the yuppies getting buried. The band would receive a little backlash for including this song on their album, but can you really blame them? The Moldy Peaches decided to release this album just a day too early, and uh, I guess the song isn't that bad, but it's still interesting. I think one other lyric that hasn't aged too well is the use of the rocky word. And and stupid the Moldy Peaches have been on and off hiatus since the release of this album, but they do still play it live when given the chance. Oh, I personally think the song aged a little poorly, but it's not in bad taste. I Am The World Trade Center is a duo consisting of musician Daniel Geller and vocalist Amy Dykes. The band started in 1999 and grew a small following for the simple yet melodic music they were making. From creating almost every song off of Daniel's laptop using drum machines and keyboard, I Am The World Trade Center has a very distinct and interesting sound, especially with Amy's vocals. That being said, their first published record was Out of the Loop, an album that would be released on July 17th, 2001. Unlike the Moldy Peaches, I'm the World Trade Center has so many different little coincidences that it's almost like they knew what they were doing. So I'll go ahead and start with the obvious. Their band name was I'm the World Trade Center long before 2001, but they would eventually change it to just I'm the World after the 9-11 attacks. 
To get into the crazy stuff, the album has 14 songs, and the 11th song is none other than September. September 11, 11 September, what? The hit song from this album was called Metro, and in the music video it follows both Amy and Daniel walking the streets and subways of New York City. What's disturbing about the music video are these scenes that closely resemble the Twin Towers on 9-11. Every time I go back to watch and analyze all these coincidences, I literally get goosebumps everywhere. It's just very bizarre that out of any concept for a music video, they went with this. Like these exploding beams in the sky. Like, out of everything, they went with this. Um, not just that, but these camera shots are so specific and resemble what other people saw on 9-11. It's just very bizarre. Following the eventual September 11th attacks, I'm the World Trade Center would be the breeding ground for hate in the underground music scene. Even though they had made everything prior to 9-11, the backlash wouldn't stop for quite a while until they changed their band name. Since their initial album in 2001, they would release two more projects in both 2002 and 2004. After this, Amy would battle cancer for quite a while, but I believe she's recovered and is living a nice married life. She also finished college and got her PhD in something, I don't know. Um, as for Dan, he's said to be living in Athens, Georgia, and that's all I could find. While I Am The World's music is nothing harmless and just fun synth pop to listen to, I can't help but get this weird eerie feeling when listening to the music. Um, I don't know if it's just the sound itself or the 911 strings that are tied and knotted to the band, but I think I have to say it's aged poorly and the sense of creepiness. I've always thought about making a video on these two songs, but I would always stop myself because maybe it's just too obscure of a topic, but I enjoyed making this. For quite a while I haven't had the creative rush to make YouTube videos, but I think it's slowly coming back. Anyway, I have a lot more spooky videos I want to make before October's over, so stay tuned and check out my recent videos, they're very good. Um, thanks for watching, leave a comment about what you thought, or leave a comment about what you ate while watching this video. Only 2,000 subscribers, but I love y'all. That's 2,700 more than I once had. And it means a lot. I want to give shouts out to anyone who's ever left a nice.